Welcome to Electron Online. No introduction discussion about quantum mechanics would be complete without talking about Erwin Schrodinger. Schrodinger was able to create an equation to describe the change of the state of a, a small particle like an electron in an atom based upon the change in time. So what it was, it was a partial differential equation described the quantum state of the system. So here's the general equation for a single particle. It is I, of course that is square root of negative one, times h bar with its h divided by two pi times a partial derivative with respect to time of the function describing the state of the particle, which is equal to the state of the particle times the effect that it has in a particular field. In this case, it would be an electromagnetic field or an electric field or magnetic field. And so therefore it would be under the circumstance or under the influence of that field. And so we need an equation to describe that. A more general equation was then developed. Again, it starts out with IH bar times the partial derivative with respect to time of that function describing the state of the particle. Of course, the function would depend upon the position, x, y, z, and the time. Of course, r would be the unit vector, or uh, not the unit vector, but the vector pointing to the location or the position of that particle. Later on, of course, they would then use the Schrodinger equation to then come up with the probability of the existence of the location of a particle depending upon the equation. And so there was actually now a methodology of describing what the position and what the state of a particle could be. And so that all came from this equation. Again, this, so the partial derivative respect to time of the, uh, of the function that describes the particle is equal to the negative of h bar squared divided by twice the mass of the particle. So this is the gradient squared, which means it's the second, the second partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z, plus the force or the function or the potential under which the particle is being uh, subjected, which also is a function of position and time, times, of course, that would then be enacting upon, upon the function of the particle. So later on, we're actually going to have a whole series of videos that will slowly describe in, in detail the equation, how to use it, and how to apply it under various circumstances. But anyway, using this equation, it, we were able, or Schrodinger was able to describe the electrons in the orbits of atoms and particles in force fields. And ultimately, for this great discovery, this great ability to then describe position of particles and atoms in force fields, we're then able to give well, not us, of course, but people back then gave the Nobel Prize to Schrodinger. Very, very, very well deserved. The equation is now, of course, invaluable to describe the orbitals in atoms, all the various s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, f orbitals, and so forth can be fully described by using Schrodinger equation, and that helped us come up with the various shapes, again, based on the equation and the probability derived from Schrodinger's equation. So obviously, very well deserved. And we'll spend a lot of time going over the very details of this particular equation in the various circumstances in which they are used. So stay tuned and let's see what else we have in store for the introduction portion of this presentation.